This video will be about water's different phases and about moisture sources. And you will learn to understand the concept of three phases of water and moisture sources. Moisture we have in three phases. Ice, the solid part, liquid and vapor in the gases phase. And ice we find in, on water, or on the roof for instance, or in precipitation, like hail and snow liquid, the regular rain, uh, and vapor, which is the gaseous phase, we normally can't see it, we sometimes can see it when we breathe outdoors when it's cold, but normally we can't see the vapor phase. Moisture source is, is really something you have to, to consider, it's a threat to the building, and they always has, have to be accounted for. And we have precipitation, regular rain, Snows, uh, hail, they can come directly vertically down to the building or from the side. We'll talk more about that lately, later. And we have moisture in air. Already in the outdoor air we have water vapor and indoors we have even more vapor concentration. And the ground moisture, it's always water or moisture in the ground. And construction damp. That's the water that we uh, will that would dry out after the building has been erected. The water that we put into uh, concrete, for instance, or already existing in building materials. And then we have leakages, of course, but this will not be accounted for here. Precipitation. This is a heavy rain on the garage roof. And that could be problematic, of course. You have to take care of uh, the water that hits the building and, and drain it off. But the really dangerous type of rain is what we call driving rain. Driving rain is water that comes from the side, basically horizontal flows of, of rain. Um, building to the right is, is a hospital nearby in Gothenburg. And after a heavy rain, when it, it both it's very windy and rain, rain at the same time. We can see that the facade of this hospital is uh, very wet on the top side, but not uh, on the other side. And the drop that falls from the sky, it, it's uh, falling the, the, the wind. It's, it's driven by the wind towards the building, but the wind goes around the building, but the rain can't follow the, the air. So it hits the building and it hits more around the edges and especially at the top region like we see in the picture. This is a very dangerous uh, um, moisture source. There's a, a, a Swedish map of driving rain and, and this look, looks different in different countries but we see we have different zones and, and zone 4 and we have very high uh, driving rain rates in the west coast where Gothenburg is situated we have for instance um, in, in, a, in a position that is exposed to driving rain we have like 550 kilogram per square meter a year and for a heavy rainfall we can have up to 70 kilograms per square meter during a day so let's say we have a wall with the uh, area of 100 square meters up to 7,000 liters or 7 tons of water can hit a wall of that size in, in a very severe driving rain day. So this has to be accounted for. We have the water vapor. Already in the outdoor air we have water vapor but we also have a production of moisture indoors due to we are cleaning and we are cooking and we have hygienic reasons, we have plants and pets and, and quite a lot of moisture is evaporating the water is evaporating into the vapor and here on the table here we have some some values how much water vapor we are producing like four persons could produce 180 grams during an hour um, cooking 80 grams per hour and so on if we sum it up we can very easily get 430 grams per hour if we uh, have this indoors. Uh, there are certain places where we have even more vapor 
production indoors. And here are some examples like swimming facilities, printing facilities, garages, industrial kitchens and skating halls. This, then you have to be very careful with the moisture production indoors. And the ground moisture. Um, since we have precipitation, we have groundwater flow, you should always count on, on available liquid water and also um, uh, humidity, high humidity air inside the pores of the, uh, the soil. Uh, we say we have maximum relative humidity of 100% in the soil and this will be explained later in a later video. So always accounting for available or present moisture in the ground. Construction damp. On the left hand picture we see wood that has been exposed to precipitation. And if this is built into the building, there will be an excess amount of moisture that has to be dried out later on. But also, if we have wood in a in regular storage facility without rain, there will be an excess amount of moisture in the wood that dries out. We're talking about, for the regular case without rain on the wood, like 20 kilograms per cubic meter. On the right hand side, we see uh, uh, where they're casting a, a foundation with concrete. There's a lot of water involved, of course, and depending on, on how much cement that is used in the concrete, it's everything between 0 to 115 kilograms per cubic meter that has to be dried out. Also, blocks of lightweight con concrete is normally very wet, so to speak, uh, contains a lot of uh, water, a lot of moisture. Uh, we talk about 80 to 180 gram, uh, kilograms per cubic meter. So, in a regular villa, we can talk about 2,000 kilograms of moisture that has in form of construction damp that has to be dried out. Summary. Water exists in three phases. Solid, ice, liquid, regular water and gas water vapor. There are several moisture sources that be, must be considered in order to achieve good moisture safety. Precipitation, moisture in air, ground moisture and construction damp. Precipitation in the form of driving rain, horizontal rain, is a great threat to constructions. Moisture in air can normally not be seen by the human eye, but water vapor in interior as well as exterior air can give moisture damages. The ground should always be considered both wet, i.e. containing liquid water, as well as containing very humid air. During the first year after the erection of a building, a lot of construction damp is present. It must be dried out in a safe way as soon as possible.